Hi there, it's July the 30th and we're continuing our journey through the book of Second Chronicles and we are in three chapters, 26, 27 and 28. And in these chapters we read about three separate kings, two who were righteous and one who was pagan, one who went against what the Lord wanted. Uh, the first king we read about in chapter 26 is, uh, is Uzziah. And Uzziah is one we perhaps know because uh, Isaiah the prophet writes in chapter 6 of his book that in the year that King Uzziah died he saw the Lord. The thing we read about Uzziah, of whose reign Isaiah also lived in, was that Uzziah followed the ways of the Lord and largely speaking he did good things. Uh, he defeated the Philistines and the Arabs and he built towers in Jerusalem. He also established vineyards in the Shephelah in the low part of Israel and also up in the north in Carmel. And Carmel Vineyards, Carmel Wine is still famous today. Uh, that area is still famous for vineyards. And Uzziah also uh, has a well-equipped army and he establishes order throughout his army. However, he gets too big for his boots. And it says when he becomes strong, he becomes proud. And he believes that he can, as the king, go into the house of God and burn incense on the altar himself. Perhaps other kings around were doing this and getting involved in the cult. Certainly Jeroboam and his descendants in Israel were getting involved in the religious matters. But he is uh, he's, uh, he's withstood by Azariah and 80 of the priests who refuse to allow him to do this. And as Uzziah is getting angry because the priests, Azariah and the priests are withstanding him, it says that the leprosy rose up through him. And from that day he became a leper. And he was known as a leper until the day of his death. And he could no longer reign in Israel. And so we find his son, Yotam, who we read about in the next chapter, reigning in his stead as regent. So that's the end of the reign of Uzziah. Uzziah. And then in chapter 27, we read of Yotam. And Yotam doesn't do what his father did, but he does follow the ways of the Lord. He doesn't go into the temple. He doesn't try and burn incense. Uh, he has a 16-year reign, which is a good one, upright. He fights the Ammonites and he wins, and he brings the Ammonites into tribute. And he basically does what is right before God. And that's the reign of Yotam. But Uzziah and Yotam are followed, uh, chapter 28, by a thoroughly bad piece of work, King Ahaz. And Ahaz, uh, he comes to the throne when he's 16 years old. He reigns at 20 26 years and he is not following the ways of the Lord. In fact, he follows the ways of the kings of Israel, the ways of Jeroboam, the ways of Ahab. He turns to Baalim, he turns to pagan gods, he even practices child sacrifice, putting his children through the fire. He's a thoroughly bad piece of work and because of this the Lord brings judgment upon Judah and now uh, the Syrians come up and they attack, and not only the Syrians uh, conquer them, but also Israel. Uh, some some of the Ephraimites from southern Israel come, and they take hundreds of thousands of people captive. But there's an interesting thing that happens here. A man called Zichri is in charge of the Israelite army. But as Zichri takes these hundreds of thousands of captives and intends to put them to slavery, and also takes the spoils of Judah, a prophet called Oded rises up and speaks on behalf of the Lord and tells them how unhappy, how, how angry the Lord is that they should be taking fellow Israelites prisoner and trying to put them into slavery. And this is totally against God's heart for his people Israel. And so there's a change of heart and instead of taking them as slaves, the people of Israel, the men of Israel turn around and they help the captives, they clothe them, they feed them, and they take them back to the city of Jericho and they release them. And so there's something of a turnaround in, in, that, uh, in that intention. But uh, Ahaz hasn't finished yet in his troublemaking because uh, he's obviously got enemies on his doorstep. So he tries to make friends with a very big power that is on the rise now in that region, the power of Assyria to the north. And he um, gives money to Tiglat-Pileser. Tiglat-Pileser is the great power in the north, he's the great king, but the money doesn't do him any good. In fact, it's not just money, it's treasures from the temple. It's cutting up the things of the temple, cutting up the vessels of the temple, and it's basically taking the Lord's things and giving it to this pagan king. 
but unfortunately it's not going to do him any good because the rising power of Assyria is sweeping down from the north. Uh, and it is the great threat, it's the great, uh, the great um, power in the area that is seeking to gobble up all of the other kingdoms around it. But he is followed by a king who we're going to find out is one of the greatest kings of this Judean history and of this period we're talking about, and that is King Hezekiah. Again, we see these ups and downs in the life of Judah, and it all has to do with putting the Lord in the right place. When the Lord is in pole position, when the Lord is to focus, as it was with Yotam, then things go well. But when there's a rebellion against the Lord, it's clear that there are consequences. The Lord withdraws his covering hand from his people and their subjects to all of the oppressors around them. We can hide in the hiding place of God. We can come in under the shelter of his wings. That's where we're invited to dwell. And we want to keep constantly coming back and keep in that shadow of his presence. Have a very good July the 30th.